Hi everybody, welcome to my video on computing slip and uplift rates from growing folds. As you might know, many folds form as sedimentary rocks are ramped up and over underlying thrusts. This often happens in foreland basins at the front of a mountain range, where convergence between two tectonic plates is accommodated along a series of thrust faults. And for folks who study tectonics, it can be very helpful to know how quickly these various thrusts are slipping. And it turns out that we can actually use the geometry of the overlying fold to estimate the slip rate on the underlying fault. And here's how this works. First, we have to understand how these folds form. Imagine a bunch of horizontal sedimentary rocks being moved laterally and forced up and over an underlying fault ramp. As the, the sediments go over, they get buckled upwards into a fold shape. And this is occurring over time. So if we know three things, we can estimate the slip rate. First, we need to know the geometry of this underlying thrust ramp. Second, we need to know what was the geometry of the sedimentary layers initially. And what's the geometry now, OK? So if we know how that geometry has changed, and then if we also know the age or the time over which that geometry changed, we can actually use all three of those things to solve for the slip rate on the underlying fault. In this video, we're going to work through an example of how we would use folded river terraces to actually estimate slip rate on the underlying fault. Although we're using river terraces here, you could also use other geomorphic surfaces, like lava flows or alluvial fans, anything where you know the initial geometry of the surface. So in this example, we're going to set it up like this. We've got a river cutting across a growing fold. And as the rocks are lifted up along the fault, the river is able to cut downwards, essentially keeping pace with the growing fold. However, as it does so, and as the river migrates back and forth over time, it abandons river terraces along its flanks. Each of these terraces represents where the river was at some point in time in the past. So this green surface was essentially the river level back at time 0. But as the fold uplifted, this little scrap of the river bottom was preserved and uplifted as a terrace. Likewise, as time continues to pass, these yellow areas of river valley bottom will eventually be uplifted as slightly younger river terraces. So that in this most recent geometry, the green terrace represents the oldest surface, the yellow represents an intermediate age surface, and then we have the modern river. And what you can notice in this sketch is that the green terraces actually are folded more than the yellow terraces because they're older and they've had more time to actually be folded above the fault. So essentially, these river terraces are acting as markers. They start out recording the initial river geometry, and then they're uplifted and folded over time. And we can use that deformation to understand the slip rate. So just to go from cartoon world to real world, here's an example of some abandoned fluvial terraces in the Tian Shan mountain range of China. So what we can see here are some of the folded rocks in the upper part of the anticline. And these tell us about the dip of the underlying sedimentary beds. Okay, So these are the actual folded sedimentary beds. These flats and, and the modern river is flowing down in this valley. We can't quite see it. And then each of these flat surfaces is actually a river terrace, with the, the most recently abandoned terraces here and the oldest ones up higher. And so in this video, we're going to focus in on a specific example, which was work done by Lave and Avwak 2001, who used a series of uplifted and folded terraces to estimate a slip rate along the main frontal thrust which is the main thrust fault out in front of the Himalaya, where almost all of the modern convergence, well, much of the convergence between India and Asia across the Himalaya is being accommodated. 
And what we've got here is essentially a growing fold with the Bagmati River flowing across it. So this is going to be the study area. And we're going to look at terraces that formed pretty much within this canyon where the Bagmati River cuts through the growing fold. And here's an example of what that looks like in the field. Okay, Here's the Bagmati River, and here is the underlying bedrock that is within the fold. And then this is the actual river sediments sitting on the terrace. So this surface represents the bottom of the river at some point in the past. And these are actually river sediments that were deposited on top of that. And of course, this has all been uplifted above the river now. Two important things that we can get from these field exposures. One is the dip of these beds actually tells us about the dip of the underlying thrust ramp. Because in some parts of the fold, the dip of these sedimentary beds is actually parallel to the dip of the underlying thrust ramp. Likewise, these river sediments actually contain fragments of wood and charcoal that can be dated by carbon-14 dating. And what that gives us is the age of these river sediments, and thus the age that the terrace was abandoned. And we'll see how we use that information in a second. So Lave and Avwak spent a lot of time essentially mapping out river terraces and dating river terraces. And what they were able to reconstruct was essentially the path of the river at different points in time. So they had a bunch of terraces that dated to roughly 9,000 years, and shown in blue. They had a bunch of other terraces that dated to roughly 6,000 years, shown in green. And then another set here, shown in white that were only 2,000 years old. So they mapped out these families of terraces that had been abandoned along the river at different times. And of course, we can measure the elevation of these terraces, and specifically the elevation above the modern river. And here's what that looks like. The modern river is shown in blue. The oldest terraces are in green here, the roughly 9,000-year-old. The second generation, roughly 6,000, is in olive. And then we've got the 2,000-year-old terraces in yellow. And of course, we see that the youngest terraces are closest to the modern river. Because they were abandoned more recently, they haven't had as much time to uplift. Whereas in the 9,000-year-old terraces, we start to see the full shape of the fold growing. And this, all of these terrace geometries are are plotted here above the actual fold itself, or a cross-section of the fold. And of course, what we see is that we get the highest uplift right above the steepest part of the thrust ramp. Okay, So these terraces were uplifted as rocks moved up this steep part of the fault. So with the information that we have, we can now estimate vertical uplift rate. And that is shown here. Essentially, we take the height of the terrace above the modern river, and we divide by its age that we got from the carbon-14 dating. And together, this gives us an uplift rate over time. And so what we see here is that when we convert this data from just height above the river into uplift rate, they actually all look very similar. The oldest terraces in green and the youngest terraces in yellow all show broadly similar uplift rates, even though they're recording those rates over different time periods. So now the final step, now that we have uplift rate, we can actually convert that into a slip rate on the underlying fault using essentially trigonometry. And what we know is we know the dip of the underlying fault. In this case, we know it from the dip of the exposed sedimentary beds. But in other cases, we might know it from seismology or, or other methods. But we know the dip of this thrust ramp. okay? And so what we can do is, and we know, and we know the vertical uplift rate above the ramp. So the slip rate parallel to the fault is then given simply by the uplift rate divided by sine theta where theta is the dip of, or the angle of this thrust ramp.
So essentially, we use the vertical uplift rate to solve for the fault parallel slip rate. And so what was especially powerful about the Lave and Avwak example in the Himalaya is that because we had three generations of terraces, we could actually plot the total amount of shortening versus time. And we see that for the 2,000-year-old terrace, we had about 50 meters of shortening. And then by we get to the 9,000-year-old terrace, we've had about 200 meters of shortening. And because these plot on a line of shortening distance versus time, that shows that we have a constant slip rate along the fault over time. And that rate is about 21 millimeters per year. What's especially amazing about this is this rate was determined roughly 18 years ago before we had GPS data. And now the advent of modern GPS data has since essentially confirmed this slip rate along the main frontal thrust. Very impressive. So in summary, this video has shown that folds can act as markers to record slip along the underlying fault. And if we know the fault geometry, the change in surface geometry, and the surface age, we can actually estimate that slip rate. And in this video, we showed an example where we knew the geometry of abandoned river terraces because we were able to assume that the river itself had had a roughly constant profile. And since we knew that pre-fold geometry, we were able to estimate essentially the, the uplift. And then we dated the terraces to estimate the time. And uplift divided by time gave us a vertical uplift rate. And then we were able to use trigonometry to convert that vertical uplift rate into a fault parallel slip rate. Thanks so much for listening. And I'll leave you with these concept questions.